The Shin Show. Today's guest, Director J.L. Park. Describe each member. Okay. Uh, in one word. In one word. Okay. All right. This is. Okay. Uh, let, let me just call out your name so we can just go. Okay. 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 Uh, Let's I can start do this. with Mark. Pure hearted. Okay. I'm going to give you time later to Pure hearted is a hyphen, so it's one yeah, word. Okay. No, I'm just saying I'm going to give you time later to explain a bit more. Okay. If you want to. Okay. Okay. Hechan. Genius. Okay. And people are going to be surprised because I had the, the personal yeah, yeah. stuff. I was surprised too. Mark, pure hearted, Hechan, genius. Okay. Second is um, Utah. Well, I was going to say honest, but since I already said that, coolest. Okay. Coolest. I agree with that. Uh, Tay? <laughs> One more Tay. That's like. Uh, that that's like a, a person that needs the most the, the the most words, but I would say in Korean I would say sachawan, but in English I would say alien. Alien, okay. Alien. All right, all right. Cheon. Misunderstood. Okay. Um, you like that one, right? Yeah. Misunderstood. Toyal. Kind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind. Oh, I already had that in my mind yeah, too. I was yeah. like, I, oh yeah. man, Chong, sweetheart. Okay, sweetheart. No. Johnny, funny. Okay, <laughs> okay. Actually, take out the bleep that out. It's gonna automatically be bleep. So, funny. Yeah. Okay, funny. Okay, hilarious. <laughs> so let's say hilarious. Okay, hilarious. Yeah. And lastly, tail. Charisma. Charisma. Yeah. I mean, I think he really is, he, he, the role for the leader in this group, it really is tail. I really think so. No, no. You know what? Not charisma. I'll say, can I use two words for tail? Like, oh, it's, what it's, is it? It's, it's like a t Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Yeah. Peter Pan. Do you think you're Peter Pan? Shut the <laughs> Um. <laughs> Oh, 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 sorry. Are, are we not? Are we not allowed to cuss? Can we say? F okay. Are, are we? Are, are, are we allowed to say? F I don't know. Actually, actually, actually. By the way, I, I've been saying duck all the whole time. They were just bleeping it out. I would, I've been saying duck. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. The Shin Show. Is there anything that you want to elaborate on for those? Uh... Well, uh, yeah, I, have, I mean, I have so much to say. Like, yeah, you want to start with Mark? Yeah, let's go with that. Mark being pure hearted, like what we said earlier, like his public image and his private image, there's very little discrepancy. Like, I mean, like even like the chess scene that we, we put, right? The chess scene, like where, you know, like when you're young, you, you soil yourself, you know, like, I mean, I've peed in bed when I was young. He's such a... He was worried. He was embarrassed. Like, oh, can we put, can, can we put that in the documentary? <laughs> like, isn't that embarrassing? Like, he's, he's such a pure-hearted uh, guy. Like, and um, yeah. So, so Mark, I feel like, um, I mean, I could have said kind for Mark as well, but yeah, hardworking as hell too. Like, I mean, there was one one part where we were running out of time and he had to leave for another shoot, and um, I asked Mark, like, please, can you? Like convinced the managers to give us a couple more hours, and Mark was like, "Yeah, like yeah, let's 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 do that." Like, so it wasn't like I mean, people think like, you know, these are idols, like like false gods or like on a pedestal. But like Mark was like, I I, I don't, it's such a cliche term, down to earth. Yeah. But if down to earth, like I mean, yeah. if one of the members you want to say down to earth, it will be Mark. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And Hechan genius. This is the reason why I call him genius. It just like it's not even my. It was the head writer. We're working with Hechan on like additional dialogue recording, or like anything you do with Hechan, you're just like, he just gets it. Yeah, he under you know? he understands the assignment. He understands the assignment, like you know, but also like talented actor. Like, I would explain the scene. Like, it, this got cut. Like, where's Ha? Like, where the kid opens the door and he's supposed to look at him. Like, I know who you are. And it's like an internal. It's like a very difficult scene to act. Yeah, exactly. If, if it's not active. With also, no dialogue, that's very difficult. Exactly. Also, dialogue recording, never a second take. Mm. So we were worried. Like, we're doing Hachan, like, where he's doing the narration for his story. Mm. Um, 
And most of the time with any actor, you can even have the, like the highest caliber actor and you'll take multiple takes. We were worried with Hechan because we didn't need another take. So in the middle of it, I got lost as a director. I was like, do, am I, do I have to do another take? So we started doing second takes just because we were worried about us being wrong. And then we later on when we heard it, it's like, no, all the first takes. So Hechan also, there's one part where we, we included footage where we asked him like, uh, do you want to be an adult? And then Mark says, no, I want to stay young. And then uh, Hechan says, I want to st stay at 20. We had to re-record that because there was this music that, that we weren't allowed to use and also that was burned into the, the footage. So we had that pr pretend, this is so funny because like the whole, uh, whole theme of the first episode is about them as children. They had to make their voices 10 years younger. And I remember doing the additional dialogue recording of Hechan, Hechan and I, we, we play, played his, his voice from the footage and Hechan, what he does is like, ha, ha. He, he's, he gets the pitch of his voice from that footage. And then he's just like, okay, roll it. And, I, and then we, we rolled it. And then he syncs it, the timing perfectly to when uh, his younger self yeah. says it. And it's the same voice. Mm. And what's astounding is usually the, the lip syncing is, is supposed to be off. Mm. Later, when we were doing a sound edit, we just left it alone. Okay, he even, there was no need, need to like even shift this. Yeah. So that's the, that's why the head writer was just like, it's been a while since we've met a genius. So like, I don't use the word lightly genius because I mean, I work in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. and you meet a lot of talented people. But some people, I think why the word genius is like where you know this person is just born destined to do something, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, even if he was unlucky and uh, he didn't join SM or... He was just destined. Anywhere he goes, he would have been a successful um, entertainer, I think. Yeah. You talk coolest because you were there. The reason why he's coolest is because he's just so honest. And he's not like rude honest. He's like, you know, when you're that honest and you're not rude or offensive, it just means you're a good person. You know, during the interview of his sister, uh, Utah's mom on the side was crying, you know, thinking about the past. And uh, Utah was always a hard worker, but at the same time, I think it's sort of like his, the soccer team. If he's not able to be himself, then there's no point in it. And I think that's so cool about him. And so even in the interviews, he was always his self. So for me, I think the coolest member of NCT 127 personally mm -hmm. uh, is Utah. And Taylor, <laughs> Taylor, the reason why he's an alien is just because he's singing all these high notes and he's doing several takes. And afterwards, he'll, he'll get out of the taxi and comes over to me. Hey. Uh, director, like, do you have any interesting stories about your your past? Yeah, <laughs> he I remember like that. that. I yeah. remember that. He randomly comes like, and he was just sincerely interested in it. And then after he just cut, just walks off over to me. He's like, he's like, and he has this tear face, like curiosity. He's like, hey, do you have more stories? <laughs> and then he'll start singing again. But he's so like, um, he has that like an alien coming to Earth and the curiosity of an alien. And he was sincerely interested. It wasn't like he's trying to make small talk. Yeah, exactly. And then there is um, uh, Cheyam. Misunderstood is because there is weird rumors, but he that is him. There's no like uh, uh, different intention. He's just trying to be himself. And when you're yourself, sometimes there's misunderstandings. But I think what he said in the documentary is perfect. He says, you know, if you're truthful enough, you know, people will see it. You know, people will see it in the end, you know. Oh, I want to ask one more thing about Chen is I was so excited to see like a viral photo of him where he had no makeup on. Like imagine being a K-pop idol and you they have no stage makeup and a photo of him he, that he took of himself, a selfie, recently went viral. And I was like, that's Chen. He's he's trying to just show him the way he is. The, mm -hmm. the public image and the private image is he's yeah. trying to re reconcile those two, you know. And then there's Chung. Chung. Wow. Oh, Chung, uh, you know, Chung is a sweetheart. And I think fans already know that. And I spent the most time with his mom and his sister. And we're talking about it and we cried together, you know. And when I talk, talk to you about the Notre Dame de Paris, like, put edit that into here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you can see the sweetness of Chung, like, even in the letter as a kid, you know, yeah. about, you know, like, oh, that, that letter is, oh. 
Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> let's move mm. on because yeah, that's yeah. very emotional, isn't and it? And by the way, I want to say like Cello had twenty seven people that he was making like entertaining, mm. and again oh, in, the, in the circus in the and, circus thing. And I know, like I said, directors cut in ten years, but like I, he was hilarious, and like I wish I could include more ten years later. Uh, but yeah, let's move on before I get into too much trouble. The Shin Show. And there and then there is Doyoung. Um, the Doyoung part, like I think he revealed in Bubble exactly what he said in the documentary. Like he's a kind person. Everyone knows this, so it's I mean, but it, the part that got cut in the documentary was he shared on Bubble. Like the reason why he shared that story. It wasn't even convincing that was necessary. We just were, were talking to him in a text where it's like, we thought that that story could help a lot of people, you know? And that that was enough. We didn't even have to convince him. It was just like Doyong thought, hey, if even one fan uh, hears this story and gets strength, mm -hmm. you know, and knows that they're not alone, then there is merit in sharing the story with the audience. And that's how, that's the type of person he is. Now uh, we got uh johnny. johnny the part that i got caught there's a there's an outtake that i really wanted to include in the documentary uh by the way don't don't make me sound like i'm complaining too much <laughs> in the thing because i'm i am complaining a lot <laughs> uh but but this you gotta include there's an outtake of johnny and there's several outtakes of johnny and uh and Taeyong. and Taeyong. Taeyong's playing doyoung and johnny's playing himself and they're lip syncing johnny's uh interview and every time Johnny would be like, like looking at like Taeyong, like, and Taeyong, he's a co consummate professional, but Taeyong kept on bursting into laughter because Johnny was hilarious. He's like, like perfectly in sync with his narration. And then Taeyong would be like, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, director. I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. And he would be like, stop making me laugh. And John's like, I'm not trying to make you laugh, <laughs> Tail. And it, he was, right? So the thing is, like, there's so many funny outtakes. Like, and then the last take, the take that made it into it, it's not Tail actually being like Doyoung, being like, you know, being upset that uh, Johnny's about to quit. It's actually Tail having a really hard time trying not to laugh. He's trying to, it's so painful him trying to not to laugh. So he, so you see him doing this. Oh, like, I'm like, I can't laugh. I can't laugh. Tail says, Right before the take, he told, told John, he's like, I'm not looking at your face. I'm going to look at your chest. I think it's funny because he hides it in this, like the image of like almost like seriousness. Yeah. But because of that, it's funnier. Exactly. So, so he's, he's like, he's like, what? What are we talking yeah. about? I'm not trying to make you laugh. Uh, Utah talk, t says he's like the, the, the sunflower. Yeah. Compares a Johnny to a sunflower. And it's true because like when everyone's like having a difficult time, Johnny will say, uh, say something hilarious and everyone would get reinvigorated yeah, re-energized yeah. and you know and i think i think that's the role that johnny plays and so that his humor isn't just for humor's sake it is a vital role yeah. he plays a vital role in the group and you know and then there's taeong oh, the bearer of the cross and i say charisma but i changed to peter pan he's peter pan because i mean um you know he was the first person in neverland you know so you know he talks about how difficult his childhood was through a hard work and perseverance uh, you know, he was able to overcome his demons and be where he is today. And it, and also the story arc ends with him, you know, learning how to love at the end. So I think uh, Peter Pan uh, is appropriate. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And also his object, the the love le the love letter with a cross, is like the main symbol of the Lost Boys. Mm. You know how, and also you know the link where they cross paths with yeah. the green, you know, and also one to seven, you know, like yeah. longitude latitude. Coincidentally, his emotionally uh, painful uh, memory being this love letter with a cross, like the link, uh, link yeah. tour thing, you know, I just, it just, everything just comes together so perfectly yeah. with Taeyong's story. So, uh, because it came so together so well, like Hechan talked about, you know, like being a child, yeah. And, yeah, you know, being stuck at 20. And then there's Taeyong, you know, uh, you know, talking about actually that all adults are actually children mm. and then and it's like the leader of the group mm. and then there's the youngest the, young, the, young, uh, the youngest member like in the first episode last episode it's almost coming together yeah, yeah. and they, i think we knew that taeyong's gonna be on the last episode because of 
The story he told it was just it would it just had to be. The Shin Show. The members' stories, despite being so personal, resonated with fans because of the universality of their struggles, triumphs, and all the mundanity of in between. Did you personal personally relate to any of them by virtue of shared experiences? Certainly, you do not need to answer this if it's too personal. I mean, of course, the, that's every project is personal, right? Mm -hmm. For for any artist, right? Actually, that was what was surprising to me because like I related so much to uh, so many members. Like for instance, Mark moving all his life. I had this. I, I was similar. Like I I moved from Korea as a child when I was like four or five years old to New York City, just like him. And then I moved there from to Virginia. Uh, moved back to Korea for middle school, then moved back to Virginia. Like I had a, I was moving a lot, so I really related to Mark in that regard. Jayon, I related to so much because Jayon had the same thing, which is uh, he went when he was five years old to Connecticut. I had moved to Virginia, which is like sort of uh, similar to Connecticut. It's like all nature, and I, me too. Like when he talks about nature, he has a fondness for nature. I have the same thing. That's why one of my favorite colors is green because I, I remember going to. Virginia for the first time and seeing all this nature and similar to them I had that experience where I I did I was four or five and I went to kindergarten and I couldn't speak the language and uh, But just like him like a couple of weeks later. I was okay And so I related so much to that and then returning to Korea for middle school just like Jayon, but he went for elementary school Yeah, I uh, so I related uh, to that, you know, and also with Toyong. I mean, I've had my own experience I think one thing there's a stigma uh, towards being a victim of bullying, but I think most people have experience with bullying. You know what I mean? Yeah, me and too. that's why uh, Toyong shared it. But I had the same ex exact same experience as Toyong in middle school. What happened was I was very popular, and the thing happens when you're popular is like there's a flip later, and that had happened happened to another person that I know in high school in America. But in middle school, some weird rumor uh, spread about me. And then it's not like a bullying where they're like hurting you or beating you up. It's like, it's worse. It's like a, it's a silence where they're treating you like you don't exist. And that's what uh, I related so much with Toyong. And in middle school, I had a similar experience where I was just not existing and they were just talking. You know what I mean? So I, I, I related to the to pain of that. And um, yeah, so for me... In the question, it said universality. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think a lot of fans, I remember like Hechan's story. I remember seeing a TikTok video of a, this Indonesian fan crying while watching it because she had the exact same experience of being raised by the grandmother. And evidently, I had the same experience too. Like my parents were away. And even to this day, my grandmother passed away. And the person I loved the most in my life was my grandmother. Like, she raised me like, uh, you know, these stories are universal. And I think it's great that, um, you know, these members shared their human side to remind people that, you know, all these stories are not like unique to them. You know, a lot of fans and audiences would relate, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to say anything? Just one more last thing to the fans. Uh, I guess, uh, which camera we can watch that or is that one? Yeah. Um, thank you so much for uh, enjoying the series. Uh, thank you so much to the you know the fans, especially the fan clubs like One to Seven Central and to and Sixteen One to Seven Project and Neo City V. Um, uh, I we really didn't have to we really didn't have to do this. Actually, this is uh, we're doing it because we care about the fans and we we were so thankful that the fan clubs really cared about um, giving more exposure to the Lost Boys. So. Yeah, thank you to the fan clubs and thank you to the fans and yeah, uh, and the reception made it all worth. The Shin Show.